Welcome to another Lineups NFL offseason video where we're going to break down the AFC South, talk through all four teams, some potential futures values that we like. And yeah, pretty interesting division this year. A couple of rookie quarterbacks, a couple of teams competing for playoff standings, and a couple of teams that Cody is not too fond of. So we'll jump right in there. Um, we'll start with the Houston Texans and Cody, a team that you are not too high on this season. So tell me why. Yeah, um, well, about time I finally get to start hating because we did a little too much loving on the last video. But yeah, this was just this uh, number just screamed instant under for me, and it's not really against what they're rebuilding. I actually do like the direction they're trending, but to go up a full two games from last season with the additions of C.J. Stroud and Will Anderson as their first two picks, that is just crazy to me. Um, like I said, nothing wrong against C.J. Stroud. I actually thought he was one of the better prospects of the four quarterbacks. The thing that scares me is that S2 score, where it's all about um, your quick reads, quick adjustments, like how can you read on the fly in a collapsing pocket. That an 18% is just absolutely screaming that he is going to uh, struggle very early on. Couple that with just a, cup, a bare cupboard of weapons on the outside after uh, with the... Uh, uh, Brandon Cook's leaving. I just don't see how this offense is going to be viable whatsoever. Um, like I said, instant uh, under 6.5 for me. The defense will improve a little, but, I mean, like I said, one one star draft addition who, and he's still got to prove himself, really. Who, versatile, he can be linebacker, he can go on the edge. We'll see what they do with him. Yeah, that just it doesn't move the needle for me whatsoever to be worried about this under. Uh, one of my early plays, I am very confident um, on this under. Though, one thing I guess to be worried about is projected to be the worst division again. Maybe they could squeak out a win or two. But, I mean, to ask for this team to get seven wins, that's just crazy to me. Yeah, I'm going to make the uh, devil's advocate case for the Texans here. I do kind of lean towards the under, but there's a couple of things to like here. Um, you start in the secondary, and Loki, pretty decent pass defense last year. 14th in DVOA, 15th in EPA. And some pretty talented players. I think Derek Stingley is going to be much better off in this man-heavy defense versus the Tampa 2 zone-heavy scheme that Lovey Smith tried to force him into last year. Um, Steven Nelson, quietly ninth among qualified corners in PFF man coverage grades. Jimmy Ward and Jalen Petrie, two safeties who can just play anywhere, all over the formation. Uh, a little slot, a little safety, just really wherever you need them. And a lot for D'Amico Ryans to work with here. Um kind of arguably a better, a more talented secondary than he even had in San Francisco last year. As crazy as that sounds, the pass rush is a much bigger question. Um, Will Anderson is the favorite for defensive rookie of the year. 34 and a half sacks over three years at Alabama. Going to be more difficult for him now. Um, playing against, you know, NFL caliber or NFL offensive lines and uh, behind or with, with a fellow pass rush that really just doesn't have much talent. Jonathan Grenard. Really regressed pretty heavily last year after a super promising 2021. So that's where the defense kind of loses it for me. And then you mentioned the receiving core. Um, it might be the worst in the NFL right now. Oh, yeah. They rank 30th in my recent update. Robert Woods is fine, but he can't stay healthy. Brandon Cooks is out the door. John Mechie, you know, really rooting for him. Obviously, tough story for him. But recovering from a 20 ACL and leukemia diagnosis, like, tough to know what you're going to get out of him this year. Um Pretty strong offensive line, featuring Larry Tunsil and Titus Howard, two pretty solid offensive tackles. But, yeah, overall, this offense is going to struggle. Um, just wanted to make a little bit of the devil's advocate case for the defense, but I definitely lean towards the under with Houston. Yeah, I definitely um, I definitely get what you're saying. I mean, definitely an improved secondary. But, I mean, it, we talked about this before. If you don't have any viable pass rush, like you're putting so much pressure on your secondary to maintain this yeah. coverage against – I mean, every single year we're progressing in uh, receiving talent. Like, I, I, they're, they're, they're going to struggle, not, I mean, not as consistently as what we saw, but if they can't generate any sort of backfield pressure, I, this Texans defense is just going to crumble. Potentially yeah. uh, under team, um, straight bets-wise, maybe early on. But, yeah, for my main bet going into the season, I hammered their under 6.5. And honestly, I might consider some alts. I might consider an alt all the way down to four and a half. Yeah. So, Cody is much lower on the Texans than I am. I'm excited to see the rush of this team. I definitely think they really screwed up the draft a little bit with the trade back up for Will Anderson. Not the move I would have made with the draft capital they had. But 
still some young talent here and a coach who I really like in D'Amico Ryan. So going to be an interesting team this season. Um, we'll shift over to the Colts, who uh, beyond just the sports betting value of this team, we're in the, in the news for some uh, unfortunate sports betting situations. And Cody, I, I know you have a little rant prepared for that. So I'll let you fire away on that one. Yeah, <laughs> Roger Goodell is just an absolute moron. And I, it probably isn't even his fault. There's probably a whole department for this. But this obviously just hit a little too home with the whole Jameson Williams thing because that gutted every Lions fan's heart. I don't know if you can tell, Lions fan. Um, and and it's, 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 it's getting more clear by each passing hour that these players were just not prepared for what they can and cannot do involving betting-wise for a league that is pushing out betting content like every single commercial. And now we're talking about how there's a healthy amount of players who are about to get uh, busted up and what, you're telling me we're just going to suspend like a quarter of players for half the season? Like it's just absolute batshit crazy to me. I, I just absolutely can't stand it. I feel I feel bad for the Colts. I mean Isaiah Rogers, he is a productive corner. Like that's going to stink, but yeah, I just I don't know. It's just it's absolutely crazy to me. Roger does the worst. And if it's not his fault, then whatever department, yeah, they're the worst too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So beyond that little rant there. Um... Do you see any value with the Colts in any direction this season? So I had a tweet, I think like, what, like a week ago. Um, I have just been absolutely staring at over six and a half uh, wins. I personally, the top three teams in this draft to me who crushed it were the Colts, Steelers, and Eagles. Everyone says like the, the Eagles were probably number one. To me, honestly, I think the Colts had the best draft class by far. The issue is is even though they improved like in almost all areas where they were weak at, um, and you brought it up to me in a reply to this tweet, it is a rookie quarterback who, let's just say, was really only drafted that high for his um, uber-athletic abilities. Not a good passer whatsoever, which just does not work in the NFL. And a brand-new coach. And that is enough for me season-long to avoid it, but it's still heavily in my crosshairs. Um I just I don't think I have enough conviction yet to pull the trigger. I still love this defense. Their offensive line, great on paper, didn't produce last year. To be honest, mate, I think the Colts are honestly just like disheartened. Like no one will tell you that they were like unmotivated, but for how good an offensive line talent they had last year, it was kind of wild for how like low they played. And yeah, they also battled injuries, and they had no quarterback help whatsoever. Um, but yeah, just Anthony Richardson. And a new coach is definitely enough for me to avoid an over six and a half. But if I had to like choose one, it definitely would be the over. But it's a lean for me at best right now. Yeah, I I lean this in the direction. Um, I actually had Anthony Richardson as my number one quarterback prospect uh, in this class, and I think his upside's immense. Uh, and I love the fit with with Shane Steichen. Um, saw what he was able to do with uh, Justin Herbert a little bit, and then Jalen Hurts, but. I think it's going to take a little time, man. I mean, Richardson just hasn't played that much football yet. And Sykin's a first-time head coach. So I think you're going to, there's going to be a little bit of growing pains here. Um, the offensive line should be better. Allowed the, the second-most sacks in the NFL last year, 60. Uh, dead last in the ESPN pass block win rate. Um, and there's some, there's some decent talent there. Quentin Nelson had the worst year of his career. Bernard Ryman and Braden Smith are a solid pass blocking tackle duo to lean on. So I think there's some upside there. The defense is the bigger question for me. Uh, the pass rush is basically non-existent. Yeah. They were 31st <laughs> in team pass rush win rate. Uh, lost Yannick and Gawkway. Quiddy Pay hasn't really panned out. You basically have one reliable pass rusher into DeForest Buckner and just not much else. And then you have a really young secondary that just lost, probably lost, Isaiah Rogers, one of its more productive players. Um, Stephon Gilmore and Romney McLeod out the door, so... Yeah, this defense might just not that be that good. Um, long term, a lot for the Colts fans to be excited about. Uh, Richardson, I think, has a ton of potential, like I mentioned, but worried about this defense after they were dead last in points per game. Or sorry, dead last in red zone scoring percentage and 28th in points per game allowed in Gus Bradley's first year. Yeah, I, I fully agree. This is, I mean, at best, this is probably a team that's just one year away from like actually being like, a viable like future target for me but yeah for now it's just a pass and they didn't really attack the or address the uh pass rush uh whatsoever um other than by drafting 
Oh, oh God. <laughs> Adetamie Awar... I'm so bad at names. Adetamie Awarie from Northwestern. Uh, I mean, other than that... I'm impressed is, that you tried it. I, I, I feel like I had to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so... And, and obviously, a pass rush is more vital than ever before as we grow into a more pass-heavy league. And if you just don't have a pass rush, like I said, it crumbles so much other areas of the defense... It, like I say, it, it's one year away for me at best. I'm, I'm probably not going to pull the trigger on over six and a half, but I'm probably going to look at it a few more times. If maybe some sharp group hammers the under here and we get a five and a half, yeah, I'd, I'd pull the trigger on that. A little more fun. Give me a reason to watch Anthony Richardson, um, who uh, who I for sure did not have number one on my big board. <laughs> um, but, yeah, still, I mean, an intriguing uber-athletic prospect nonetheless. Yeah, I will say the Richardson bet that I kind of like is Rookie of the Year. Um, you can get it at plus 900 right now on FanDuel. Uh, I talked the B. John Robinson one to death, bet him at plus 450 right after the draft. It's down to plus 250, plus 300. So I think the, the value's on Richardson now. Um, mm. I think that number's even a little long right now because of the uncertainty about whether he's going to even start week one. But I really think he's going to. And... With his rushing potential, like he may not even be that great of a passer right away, and he's still going to be pretty productive in this offense because of his rushing ability. So that's something I would be interested in. If I was going to be forced to pick a Colts bet right now, that would be the one I would be on. Um, but a team that I'm going to be looking to bet, I think, as the year goes on, after Richardson gets a little bit more comfortable, Sykin gets a little more comfortable, and this defense maybe finds its legs a little bit throughout the season. I uh, I fully agree with that too. Um, I talked about, or I think I put a little blurb in my uh, Bijan uh, entry because we both took it at the same time. I said for the award this year, I'm definitely I think I'm going to avoid all the quarterbacks. I'm definitely avoiding all the receivers. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I actually really like where they all kind of landed. I just don't think none of them are in a space where they're going to be like the clear cut number one. So like they're not going to pull ahead. Um, so to me, this award comes down to uh, Bijan and Jameer Gibbs. But I have been really, really liking adding uh, Anthony Richardson. He would be the one quarterback I would take to uh, compete for this award. So, yeah, like I said, same here. If I had to make one Colts bet, season-long bet, it would probably be AR for Rookie of the Year. But we can also we'll get into that for the award <laughs> episode. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we'll have some rewards videos later in the offseason as we get, get along here. Um, we'll move on to the Jaguars now. And a team that I think is super interesting Um uh, that first, uh, worst of first after the Urban Meyer year from hell, um, won the division, made the playoffs for the first time in a little bit, and you know, looked awesome in the process. Trevor Lawrence finally started to deliver on some of that hype that we all had for him. Doug Peterson reaffirmed himself as one of the best coaches in the league, um, and you know, a lot of good vibes in Jacksonville right now, but some underlying stuff that I, I'm a little bit worried about for this team. So I'm curious, like, where you're landing at with the Jaguars as we head into the, the offseason more. Um, I'm not going to lie. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> this I, I can't really recall a team that is poised to be good. Like, this isn't – I'm not basing this off of kind of like what you hear the public say. Like, I know the Jags are going to be good, but I don't know what's stopping me. I, I don't like their division number. We talked about that earlier. Um, I'm not a big like favorites guy. I want like, I want to like attack like a secondary team. I just yeah. I, I guess I really don't know what's like stopping me. I think Trevor Lawrence is going to take the next step. Doug Peterson is one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. His I mean his presence was obviously an immediate improvement for Trevor Lawrence and the rest of the offense. One thing I do like, um, and you wrote about this, I did like the Calvin Ridley angle for most yards. I personally think Calvin Ridley is one of my favorite receivers, and what happened to him was absolutely tragic. I mean, the poor guy just wanted to make some parlays, but, I mean, to be honest, if it was me, I'd, <laughs> I'd suspend him for just making parlays in general. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I just I don't really have an angle, I guess, what I really want to do with this team. I mean, if we're – let's be honest. Other than who we're about to talk about, this is the Jags division to lose. Like, this is the weakest division in football. Just I'm I'm just not there yet, and I I think I need to get talked into it. Good because like I said, with they're poised, they're poised, especially the offense. They're poised to make a huge leap. They are going to be a playoff contender, maybe even win a game this year. I mean, they were a Mahomes injury away from potentially stealing one last year. I just I, I don't know something's stopping me. Yeah, well I'll, I'll break down a little bit of what might be stopping you. Um, 
And it's going to potentially lead me to bet the under on their win total. I haven't locked it in yet, but I'm leaning that way for sure. Um, As we just talked about how we like this so, team. And just... <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are so there are things I like about this team. I like to, I like Trevor Lawrence. I like their receiving core. But you look at what got them to where they landed in 2022. They had a last place schedule, first of all, which obviously benefits their ability to win games. Um, they had the second fewest adjusted games lost to injury, according to Football Outsiders. And then I found this interesting uh, this interesting trend where the highest spending team in the NFL has spiked in wins in the following year after that free agency period uh, before immediately regressing the following season. So those teams averaged plus five wins in the first year, and then in the second year, minus 4.2 wins. So... There's a few things that you could see there, um, you know, that last place to first place schedule, possibly uh, those players ultimately not being as good as they were expected to be. But the Jaguars themselves had this happen to them in 2017, got plus seven wins from free agency. And then in 2018, minus five. So where is that going to come in? To me, it's on the offensive line where this team has some issues that they haven't addressed enough. They were 31st in team pass block win rate last year. It didn't matter as much because they had a scheme that allowed them to get rid of the ball quickly. And they placed they played some teams that had some weaker pass rushes, but you look at their offensive line. Brandon Scherf got that $30 million contract, immediately had the worst year of his career. They lost Jawan Taylor in free agency. Cam Robinson is coming off a torn meniscus and facing a PED suspension that's yet to come down. Uh, they drafted Anton Harrison, which to me was just a complete need pick. And I thought he was like, more of a fringe top 50 player than a first rounder. Um, Walker Little had a rough second season. Luke Fortner had a really brutal rookie year. 40th out of 42 qualified centers on PFS. So this offensive line is bad, man. And like, I, I might not even have, have ranked them low enough. I think I had them at 27th in my rankings. Like they could be even worse than that. And their pass rush on the other end too. They were 27th in the sack rate last year. Trayvon Walker, I'm not really sure how good he's going to be yet. And they didn't really add to their pass rush. Their defenses on the whole was kind of bad last year and they kind of skated by, but I don't know. I think their offense has a ton of talent with Lawrence Ridley, Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram. It's going to be a fun team to watch. Is that going to translate to wins though? I'm, I'm not, I'm not sold. So I'm lower on the Jags than I think some people are. Yeah. Um, I mean, kind of like the, um, uh, oh my god, who we just talked about? Who was the last thing we just talked about? Oh, the Colts. Yeah, Colts. kind of like yeah. <laughs> cut that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, kind of like the the Colts. Um, I mean, it, it's 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 going to be a pass for me. I mean, I guess. I mean, I do like what you're saying. I mean, if you're saying they're poised to regress, especially defensively, I guess I would lean the under as well. But like I said, I don't like the division number. I don't like the win total. This is just a pass for me, though. If there's actually one thing I really do like, and I know we're not a fantasy <laughs> YouTube pager by any means, but a very late steal I like is I love Tank Bigsby. And yep. they drafted him for one sole reason. It's because Travis Etienne is one of the worst goal line running backs I've ever seen in my life. Like, <laughs> like, he like head scratching me, like screaming at my TV, like bad. Tank Bigsby is going to be such a vulture <laughs> to, to, to Travis Etienne. Yep. Like I said, so yeah, maybe there's a little late fantasy target for you, but literally any bet wise, I have nothing. Yeah, I will just move. I will just mention the Calvin Ridley. Um, I got him at forty five to one to lead the yeah. NFL in receiving. Just a fun long shot. I mean, you know, anytime you place a forty five to one bet, like we're, we're not we're not talking about <laughs> throwing down half your bankroll here, but you know, just a fun flyer and a guy that I think we're both rooting for really heavily. Um, Heavily, really recommend checking out his Players Tribune article. He really talked about his struggles with anxiety and depression. Um, his house was broken into, and he had some injuries, and it was just a really rough go of it for him. He played through a broken foot and still had almost 1,400 yards catching passes from an ancient Matt Ryan. Like, the, the upside here is tremendous. If he is actually at full strength and hasn't lost anything from the time off, like, catching passes from Trevor Lawrence in an offense that if the defense is bad, like I think it might be, could be playing from behind quite a bit. I think Ridley might have a massive year. So go check out that article if you want to read more about Kevin Ridley. But on the whole, looking to fade this Jags team, which brings us into the Titans. 
a team that actually I'm pretty can, I bullish on. The, can I go back to the Jags oh, real yeah, quick? Yeah. Go for um, it, go for it. I can't believe this just completely eluded me, which I also tailed. You, know, you sent me your article. I read it, and I uh, tailed. I think I got him like 41 to 1 or something like that. Um, this actually just reminded me. I could not tell you what year it was. This was a few years ago. Um, I had Calvin Ridley like 100 to 1 most receiving yards. He, obviously, it was Falcon year. Julio Jones must have been down or something. He was the lead uh, receiver. And um, – yep. I remember he was leading until like two weeks left of the season and he either got hurt or pulled or something. And he ended up like taking like third by like 60 yards or something. Brutal. So yeah, no, nah, a little, maybe he can give me a little redemption for that, uh, redemption that busted bet. ticket. Oh man, that would have been, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was so excited. And I can't believe I just completely it just alluded me to, uh, we started talking about this. <laughs> yeah. So like I said, nothing for me on my end. I'm um, tailing your uh, Ridley bet. And that's about all I got. Yeah, if, if he does pull it off, I will be purchasing a Jaguars um, Calvin Ridley jersey. For I'll sure. be sending you so. a bottle of whatever your favorite booze is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll jump into the Titans here. And a team that I feel like everybody's just low on, man. And to, even today, like we were looking at a Twitter and there were reports about DeAndre Hopkins um, potentially being interested in the Titans. And people were, <laughs> on Twitter were like, why would he go there? They're rebuilding. Like, they're going to be terrible. And I, I think I, I, there's a bit of a misconception around this Titans team right now. So, they started last year 7-3. and three, um, Finished the year on an awful 0-7 run. But they got really, really bad injury luck. Uh, third most adjusted games lost, according to Football Outsiders, which kind of the converse of that metric uh, we talked about with the Jaguars. But they lost four of those last seven games by five or fewer points. So... Any one of those really could have gone the other way, and that was with Malik Willis and Josh Dobbs at quarterback, which was the worst quarterback situation in the league over the back half of the season. Um, it's still a team that won nine straight, nine plus games in four straight years prior to last year, and Ryan Tannehill's back. And last year he was fifth in yards per attempt, fifteenth in EPA. Like he's still a really solid quarterback. And Derrick Henry, I don't think he's really slowing down yet. Sixty nine missed tackles last year. Uh, second most of his career, second best PFF rushing grade of his career, and a couple of year two receivers in Traylon Burks and Chiga Conquo, who I think people are really high on. So, like, where are you at with this Titans offense? And I want to talk about the defense a little bit too, but, I mean, just in terms of, like, the pass catchers and Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill, like, how are you feeling about this team? Um, yeah, so, uh, like I said, we were tweeting about this earlier. Um, if I had to pick a uh, bet for them for now, it probably would be them to win their division. I mean, this team was just decimated by injuries last season. And I know you said we'll talk defense later, but a majority of that pain came from the defensive end. Yeah. But for offense, um, I like I said, Derrick Henry, he's not skipping a beat. He did have – there were those offseason rumors that they might trade him or what they want to do. It seems like for now he's staying put, which, I mean, wouldn't surprise me at all. And um, Tannehill, uh, I mean, he's back. Um, pass catching unit, I mean – Prove it to me. I love the talent there. Um, nothing that wows me, but I mean, it, to me, it's just a unit that's poised to improve. And I mean, that's what Tannehill is missing. I mean, so yeah, like I said, this is poised. Uh, the offensive line, uh, great. Uh, Rabel, I mean, he'll he's a great coach. I, I like everything that they have. It's just, I don't know. It, it, it's last year gave me a sour a sour taste in my mouth, but I do realize it. I mean, a lot of it was poised to injury. Um, so yeah, like I, I'm, it's definitely going to be a team I'm going to back. I actually am. Uh, I think you uh, tweeted this too. Um, replied to uh, uh, taking them week one. Was yeah. that you? Yeah. Okay. Thoughts. So. Yeah. Yeah. I really liked that angle because, like I said, I got nothing season wise for them. But yeah, I mean, this is just a unit that's just poised to bounce back, and they get the fortunate of being in a very weak division. To me, it's Jags or Titans. The other two just not threats just yet. Um, but yeah, I mean, if they can stay healthy, this is definitely going to be a unit that's going to uh, compete. Yeah, so you mentioned the offensive line. Um, that's uh, that's kind of the part that I, ha- I have a hard time with. Um, I think I had them 32nd on my rankings. They lost Taylor LeJuan, Ben Jones, and Nate Davis. And just a lot of uncertainty in that unit. I don't I don't know if they'll actually end up the worst offensive line in the league, but that's where they landed in my preseason rankings. Um but it's not like they've had the best offensive lines uh, during this kind of recent run. So I'm not 
I'm not super concerned about it. We'll see how that plays out. But, yeah, you mentioned the defensive injuries. And they got decimated last year, especially in the secondary. Um, 28th in pass defense DVOA. But you look at the personnel, and they, they got some solid players. Kevin Byard and Imani Hooker, one of the best safety duos in the league. Sean Murphy Bunting, really nice free agency pickup. Christian Fulton had a nice year last year. And the front seven is still awesome. First in run defense DVOA. And... Just loaded with talent. Jeffrey Simmons, Danico Autry, Taylor Tart, and then Harold Landry, who tore his ACL right before the start of last season and is presumably fully healthy now. So, I don't know. I think you look at you look at Mike Vrabel, and I don't have the stats in front of me, but I would venture to guess that he's been the most profitable coach against the spread as an underdog over the last five years or whatever. And, I mean, this is going to be another year where I think he – they're going to outproduce expectations, not because they have a talent edge, but just because of the mentality of this team and the coaching. And mm -hmm. I love also the, under the radar too, that they got rid of John Robinson, the GM. Um, I think his name was John Robinson. Um, but they brought in Rand Carthen, former Niners exec, who has a much better relationship with Vrabel. And I just think in terms of a cohesion and um, top to bottom culture kind of a thing, I, I think that little spat between... GM and coach being over is, is kind of a big deal for this team, too. But at plus 400, man, I, I just think that that number is way too long. Yeah, and uh, let me backtrack to something I said. When I said I would really like their offensive line, I meant offensive line addition with Peter Skaronsky. <laughs> yeah. And no, that's on yep. me. This, I mean, but I don't think this it's not going to – one player doesn't, like, change, like, the whole offensive line. But I don't see them repeating bottom metrics again. I think they're at least going to regress back to average. And I mean, but scheme yeah. alone, I mean, that's, that's what will help their case. But, um, but yeah, going back to when we were talking about injuries, um, a majority of their injuries came in the secondary, and they dropped to a league-worst uh, defensive pass DVOA. I mean, just health alone, you're regressing back. I mean, if they can just give at least an average-type performance to match one of the best um, um, run-stopping units, I mean, this is a defense that they, they can slow down the best of them, which that's all you really need when you go into a run-heavy offense because you're going to bring in so much variance. I mean, if you can just chip away late, play conservative, get the late win, I mean, that was the Ravens' identity for, like, the past, like, five years and worked for them. So, yeah, I mean, the Titans are kind of going to be mirroring that. And also, like we said, like, I mean, Derrick Henry's not skipping a beat whatsoever. So, yeah, if injuries could just even bring back the offensive line and the secondary just back to average-type marks, this unit is very live to uh, steal this division, which, like I said, I'm uh, probably going to be firing on that. Uh, yeah, and if you think they can win the division, I just checked this now. Mike Vrabel is 30-1 to 1 to win Coach of the Year. I mean, he's not stealing. That seems... That. Dan, <laughs> From your guy, Dan over, Campbell? Over Dan Campbell? And that's not even bias. Though, I mean, I'd be fine. I mean... Picked. I would take the 30 to 1, but. I just think that's a bit. That's kind of long, man. It's the same odds as Jonathan Gannon and Zach Taylor. Like. Kind of the same guy, too. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Rabel's just, I think, like a lot smarter Dan Campbell, if we're being honest. Wow. Actually, yeah. Um, where'd you see that at? So I, I think there's some stuff to be excited about with this Titans team. Where'd you, uh, where'd you see the 30 to 1 at? Uh, FanDuel. Okay, I'm going to shop around. Yeah, that might be something worth firing on. Oh, nothing official there. Official play will be on the Titans to win the division, and official play on draft Chaylon Burks and Chig Okonkwu in your fantasy leagues. Um, <laughs> Burks, pretty rough rookie year. A lot of pressure to replace A.J. Brown. Had some asthma issues, suffered a toe injury, but really picked up steam over the second half of the year, which unfortunately was when Tannehill was out. And then Okonkwu, I mean, he led tight ends in yards per catch as a rookie. Was first in yards per route run, second in PFF receiving grades. Like, those two guys might be really, really good. So, I'm, I'm kind of bullish on the Titans team, man. And plus 400 to win an AFC South division with two teams with rookie head coaches, rookie quarterbacks, and then the Jaguars who are kind of primed for some regression. Yeah, give me, give me that uh, plus 400 on this team. Yeah, I mean, other than um, – oh, I just realized I wrote Dan Campbell. <laughs> other than uh, Vrabel, of a p uh, potential coach of the year, um, if, I, if, I had to make a, if I had to make a bet, I am really liking that division number. And it's really just kind of the number alone. Like I said, this is still the Jags' division to lose. I know you're a little more bearish on them. But 
but like I said, I mean, just health wise, if we could just bounce back to average, this Titans, we're going to see this Titans unit like this was a playoff team years ago. And um, we need to backtrack another thing. When I said I wasn't really like too thrilled of um, the receivers, even though they're, they're poised to progress. I mean, really, you can't really not even knock on them too hard because of uh, what they had thrown to them <laughs> late last year. Yeah. So, like, yeah, yeah. so it's, it's definitely going to be an interesting team. And um, we talked about it earlier, but uh, you officially fired on them uh, week one. Is that an official play? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Titans yeah. plus three and a half week one against the Saints team that I am fading this year pretty heavily. Um, I took the Falcons to win that division, but... Yeah, I mean, man, give me plus three and a half with Mike Vrabel against the Saints team with Dennis Allen as a head coach with Derek Carr coming off a quietly kind of rough year. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll, t- I'll take all of those points. And who knows? Maybe in between now and then, some of the Camara thing will uh, last season, whatever suspension. Ah, uh, true. True. But already, yeah. All right. Well, that'll wrap it up for us here. Um, you can check us out on Twitter. Uh, I'm Wayne Sports on Twitter. Cody. You said it in the last video, I already forgot. At K, wow, thanks. <laughs> uh, at K Maelstrom, uh, letter K in my last name. Yeah, uh, we are going to be having quite a bit of NFL and college football offseason content for you. Some more features to be fired on, articles to come, more videos to be recorded as well. And yeah, get excited. We are only a couple short months away from the start of the season. So thank you guys for watching.